Welcome, everybody, to the first ever Locked On Blue Jays in Gate 14 crossover. You are Locked On Blue Jays, your daily Toronto Blue Jays podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to Locked On Blue Jays. Thank you for making Locked On Blue Jays your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. We have the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to, brought to you by SupplyHouse.com. Is the reliable way to get parts fast. Shop for your next plumbing, HVAC, or electrical job and get fast shipping from coast to coast at SupplyHouse.com. All right, we are here. The long-awaited episode. Johnny Junta from Gate 14 is joining us today. Johnny, how are you doing today, brother? Doing good. I'm doing a little bit better than the Blue Jays, obviously, but... Uh... Yeah, I'm doing fine, you know, just enjoying the summer and uh, just buzzing along. Yeah, obviously with uh, the way the Blue Jays season is going, not a lot to get excited about with Blue Jays baseball. Uh, before we got on here, obviously the, the highlight of last game was Ernie Clement pitching. So that's kind of where we're at with the Toronto Blue Jays team. So I guess let's just get right into it. So obviously you live on Twitter. You've been seeing a bunch of stuff randomly going on, a bunch of bold takes, a bunch of th- crazy things going on. But what I've been seeing on Twitter is there's a lot of Blue Jays fans that think once Vladdy does sign a contract if he does sign a contract he's going to come come place it when he signs do you think body is eligible to sign this contract do you think ross atkins actually wants to keep this guy here long term and you think it's a possibility that he does sign by the end of the season yeah listen i mean they gotta they gotta if he keeps hitting like this that price gonna keep going up right i mean i mean i i don't know what more vladdy has to do this season i mean if you look at his career 2021 insane like the mvp season runner-up mvp 2022 was people say it was a down year the guy had 32 home runs last year was kind of really the only bad full season of his entire career and this year he's stringing together a pretty good season so i mean if, if you justify the best way to justify it is looking at the massive body of work he has and the guy is so young i just i, I don't know why fans are like nickel and diming and worried about like, oh, it's 20, 275 million compared to 300. Who cares? Like, I, I just want him to be a Blue Jay forever. And I, he's the only thing that's on this team right now offensively that makes it enjoyable watching. Maybe not named Spencer Horowitz. But, uh, yeah, it's just who gives a fuck? Give him whatever money he wants, honestly. Like, I, I don't care anymore. Yeah, it's sort of painful, right? We, we've talked about this constantly is that the, the amount of bickering in the fans in the fan base is just horrendous from a guy that's – being the best player on your team, and you're really not going to get anybody better. Um, yeah, it, you're not like, okay, you get cool prospects. Like, the chance of a prospect turning out to being what Vladdy is is so slim, dude. Like, it, it's you already got a good player. Why do you want to trade him for a chance at a good player that you already have? That's where I'm at with it. It's like, what what's the point? Like, what what's the reasoning behind letting go of a like? A, a superstar, uh, like a, a superstar talent that is a Blue Jay, that's been a Blue Jay forever. Why get rid of him for a chance at someone that's good? That's why I don't get the entire like trading him situation. I'll never understand it. No, and that's exactly what we've been saying too. Is that these prospects are a shot in the dark? Really, it doesn't matter how good or how highly touted they are. They could have injury problems. They could have anything. And what we're going to take a shot in the dark on a flyer instead of the proven talent that wants to be a blue Jay for life. I, I don't know. It's one of those things I'll never understand. We get comments about it constantly. And it's just, it, it's just painful to see that the fan base is actually split on this. It's just insane. Yeah. It's, it's the fans that are like um, intrigued and like amazed by prospects. That's what, what it is at the end of the day. And I just, I can't see myself getting up for prospects and like three years down the road looking like the Mookie Betts trade and being like five of these guys aren't even here anymore two of these guys aren't even playing baseball anymore it's like I just I, I'm not gonna take that risk and I don't care for it so I just want to keep Vladdy and I want to be a Blue Jay forever 100 like you said with a prospect it's a chance you want every single prospect you get you want to turn out like Vladimir Guerrero Jr you want them to be hitting for home runs you want them to be hitting for power you want them to be the face of your franchise and that's exactly what Vladimir Guerrero Jr is 
going in a little bit of a different direction here. So the Ross Atkins and the front office has been hammering into the fans' heads that they want to retool this year. They're going to rebrand and go back for a run for 2025. And then you're looking around this division. Obviously, the Baltimore Orioles are a wagon. The New York Yankees, I'm thinking they're going to sign Juan Soto. Obviously, they're still going to have Aaron Judge there. Shane McClanahan, Drew Rasmussen will have full seasons with the Tampa Bay Rays. And the Boston Red Sox are pretty much everything we wanted the Toronto Blue Jays to be. For next season, do you think the Blue Jays actually have a real shot of winning the AL East or even just making the playoffs? I, I don't think. Uh, listen, I, I don't think uh, they their ceiling is winning an AL East. I, I don't think that's going to happen. I can't see that happening for the next five, six years. I think their ceiling is what they are doing the last two or three years is hosting a wild card game, just getting into the playoffs. That's what the ceiling is. They're the Orioles are light years ahead of the Toronto Blue Jays. They have tons of money to spend. New owners. Uh, Yankees are a little frauds. Let's call it what it is. I mean, their prospects are obviously overhyped, and uh, they just have a Juan Soto and Aaron Judge that carries an entire lineup. Uh, I think, I think there is avenues to go where you could be fine. I mean, you, you keep Vladdy, you're keeping Bo. There is no way Bo has next year a bad season like he had this year. I don't think that's physically possible for that. And you got pieces like Spencer Horwitz who have been unreal. Leo Jimenez has been pretty fun to watch. I mean. You got to surround them with free agents. You got to be smart in free agency like the Kansas City Royals were where you buy pieces that you need and you don't give a – you overpay if you have to right from the rip so no one else takes them for you. I think that's the avenue you go. Like an Anthony Santander is a good piece. Jeff Hoffman uh, from the Phillies is a free agent this year. He was an all-star this year as well. There's avenues you can go. But I I think if you have a good core and you get rid of like the dead weight, like the Turners, the Kiermaier's, uh, all that type of stuff. I think you. I think there's ways they could go here. Well, it'll be fine. Yeah, and, and we've talked about this. We did our big sort of first part of our trade deadline episode yesterday. Uh, and, and one thing that we sort of have been hammering into people or trying to, and, and maybe this is just a me thing. I don't understand the point of trading away some of your best bullpen arms when you're going to need a good bullpen next year, you can't run it back with the the back ha- or the the crappy part of this bullpen. If we yeah. trade Trevor Richards, Jimmy Garcia, Chad Green, what are we going to? What are we going to pick up in free agency that's going to be better than those guys? And are we going to? I don't know. It it just doesn't seem like a like a positive it result just, out of that. It, the, the the tough thing is is like at the end of the day the bullpen is the most random thing in baseball. Like you look at some bullpens, some teams haven't spent shit on bullpens and they have a really good one. Like the Mariners are trotting out Taylor Saucedo and Trent Thornton and they have a good bullpen. You know, it's like, it's such a random thing. It's just Ross Atkins has to sign the right arm for he sees projectability for this off season. If it means overpaying a little bit to get them before other teams do so be it. But yeah, it's at the end of the day, it's like, you're going to have to, go right from the rip and the first day of free agency or whatever early in the, and just sign arms that you need. And it's just retool the entire bullpen because what they got right now is not, is not going to do the job. And Yimmy's going to be gone. Uh, Trevor Richards, who cares? I mean, he's given up 16 runs last 16 innings going to be gone. And uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be a weird look going into this off season on what Ross Atkins does. Cause we talked about it last year. We talked like Ross Atkins is essentially GMing for his job this off season. Turns out he had a bigger leash than we thought. Now he's jamming for his job. So I, I, it's a weird spot to be in, man. But I, I don't know if I trust Ross Atkins to make the moves that essentially will fix this team, you know? Well, that's why, like, the narrative I'm trying to start here is Trevor Richards just loves Canada. He's just absolutely plummeting his trade stock. So he's not going to be giving us as much as what we want in return. But again, bullpen yeah. arms don't really get you a lot at the trade deadline anyway. And you kind of touched on Ross Atkins a little bit. But obviously, general managers not usually fired during the season. A lot of people are calling for his head right now. Even if Ross Atkins, in your eyes, has a successful trade deadline, do you think they do give him another chance in 2025 to run this retool back? Pretty, or do you think he's... Yeah, I'm pretty sure BNS has already come out and said that Ross Atkins will be back next year. So I I don't know, man. I mean, if you look at the greater scheme of things, a lot of the contracts he's made have been fine. I mean, he hasn't made a lot of duds. Like Kevin Kiermaier this offseason, sure, terrible, terrible move. Justin Turner, terrible, terrible move. But he's brought us Kevin Kiermaier, or Kevin Gossman, sorry. He's brought us Chris Bassett. Do I want Ross Atkins fired 100%, by the way? I'm not. I'm not standing for him here, but... Gossman, Bassett, the Varsho trade. I mean, Varsho is great in the outfield. Sure, whatever. Can't hit. Um, 
some of the stuff he has done has been okay. It's not all terrible, terrible moves. It's just not addressing the needs when you let Teo walk, which is the biggest thing. Yeah, and you know we've we've done our our five episodes uh, every day during the week, so we have a ton to cover, and we went over Ross Atkins, you know, good moves, bad moves, but at the end of the day, I mean, you haven't won a playoff game. Yeah, it's it's pretty horrible here in Blue Jays land. Yeah, it's it's been bad. I mean, I think what the front office is looking at is the bigger sample size is the regular season not the playoffs, right? Like it, this team had 91 wins or whatever it was when they won, when they, uh, when they hosted an, uh, the wild card game two years ago, the year before that they had 90 wins and missed the playoffs the year last year. Like they're averaging 90 wins a year, right? Like it's, if you don't count this year, they're averaging 90 wins a year in the last three years. I think that's what the ownership's looking at and being like, this was like a terrible, terrible team this year, but previous years he has shown that he can build 90 win teams. I think, that's a bigger sample size compared to with how random the playoffs are. You know, I, I don't believe in that, but that's just what the baseball minds are probably saying uh, in the front office. No, I, yeah, I don't I mean, hate that take, but obviously as Toronto Blue Jays fans, we want to see playoff success. The players, they're obviously going to want to see playoff success as well. As well. Nobody cares if you win 120 games in the regular season, if you're going to get swept in the wild card series, pretty much oh, the last two seasons anyway, especially against the Minnesota Twins, where you score uh, two runs in that two game series. But anyway, uh, moving on to uh, some, or sorry, I was thinking it was one run. It's, uh, the, the season's flying by, but moving on to some, uh, some other rookies or you could say buffalo boys which is pretty much running the toronto blue jays right now and you kind of again you said spencer horwitz looks really good obviously he's hitting over 300 you're just having mlb caliber at bats looking pretty good at second base as well you touched on leo jimenez as well but we'll throw in at, or, or elvis martinez obviously uh the guy's just uh, apparently having trouble getting his wife pregnant not gonna read into that too much uh Aston barger david schneider a bunch of guys that uh have been in buffalo do you think that, like, for me, Vladdy and Boba Shad are the two you want to build around? Do you think these pieces are going to be uh, central and a huge uh, supporting cast for these two players? Do you think this is actually going to be able to give the Blue Jays a chance to compete in this AL East and the AL in general? If you look at this lineup, I mean, obviously the IKF injury kind of screwed them over a little bit. But looking on next year, I mean, you got Springer leading off, and Springer has shown, like, second life here. You got Vladdy. You got Bo, you got Horowitz, you got IKF. That's a pretty good base of a lineup right there, right? Like, that's not a bad lineup. Uh, it's the power bat. Like, this team does not have a, I'm going to hit 190, 220, but I'm going to hit 40 bombs. This team does not have that. And that's what that's the issue that you need to address it, it is, is picking up a power bat. It, does that mean overpaying for Anthony Santander probably? Yeah, is there going to be a million teams interested in Anthony Santander? A hundred percent. But I don't care what Anthony Santander calls. I just want a bat where he, a guy where he steps up to the plate. I'm like, oh, this dude's going to launch, or it's going to be like, or he's going to, or he's going to strike out. And that, that's what this team's missing. They don't have that. They just have tons of noodle bats. And I'm looking forward to seeing what Ross Atkins does this offseason with that because that's the only way you can kind of fix this team is by building around the kind of decent core you have. I know the comment section will probably disagree with me on that, but let's not ignore. I mean, Spencer Horwitz is good. Like, Vladdy is good. Bo Bichette has led the league in hits three times his career. Springer, obviously, we you know what Springer does. He's aging. But this is this team has the, like, five or six pieces in that lineup where they can be good. You got to splash, and you got to hit on the free agents. That's the biggest thing, and they haven't done that the last two years. Yeah, no, and that that that's exactly sort of the part we were hammering home yesterday was that there is a base. It's just that the supporting cast necessarily isn't what you want it to be, and that's what, yeah. that's what's been plaguing this team all mm -hmm. season long, right? You get you get Vlad going off for however long, then you get Springer heating up, but then he dies off or something, and Horowitz goes nuts, or then he dies off, and Bo Bichette has a couple of good games. It's it's just you know it, it's not consistent enough, and it's not consistent enough up and down this lineup. Today's episode also brought to you by Booking.com. As you guys know, Booking.com helped me make my travel plans when we went out to Toronto, when we went out to New York, and we're going down to Minneapolis at the end of the summer, so it will help me there as well. With summer travel heating up, especially travel for baseball games, it's time to explore those U.S. cities you've always secretly wanted to learn more about. Yes, we're talking about your rival cities, just like when I went down to New York. Didn't really want to watch the baseball team play, but New York is such an iconic city. 
and Booking.com helped me have a great time there. With hotels, bed and breakfast, vacation rentals, resorts, and so much more on Booking.com, you might just find your perfect stay even in your baseball rival cities. The right stay can make you a fan of any U.S. city, even your rivals. Book today on Booking.com, on the site, or in the Booking.com app. Today's episode is sponsored by FanDuel. As you guys know, FanDuel is my favorite app ever because I have been winning money. And sometimes, yes, I do lose money, but I've been on such a hot streak betting on Teoscar Hernandez to win the home run derby. Betting on the Blue Jays games, I've been constantly winning because it seems like I just know the answer of what's going to happen. But that's going to only last so long as I probably am not that smart. And I'm going to start making my own parlays instead of using their pre-made parlays. I love sports. I love them so much. I never want them to stop. But as the playoffs have wound down in the NBA and NHL, we get fewer games. And the sports aren't sportsing like I want them to. But FanDuel lets me keep the sports going wherever, whenever I want. All I have to do is open the app and dream up bets anytime I'm in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or bonus daily. That's right. There's something new for everyone every day, all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most out of your summer. Um. I guess looking back, there's over this season, I, we've sort of done a little bit of, um, I guess, looking back at what our predictions were, stuff like that. And, and it, I just have I just have to ask you, the Shohei Otani whole sweepstakes thing going on, where were you sitting on that? Because I was in the deepest depression possible. Yeah, listen, I mean, obviously my Twitter, <laughs> I was getting bombarded with tweets and DMs and everything when he ended up, when it ended up being false, the rumors, but Listen, I believed. Like, why? Why wouldn't I believe when a a, a Hall of Fame writer, like a baseball hall, like a Hall of Fame voter, says Shohei Otani's coming to Toronto? Why the fuck? Why would I not believe that? Like, I yeah. people like I was getting DMs like, "Kill yourself! You're an idiot for believing that. You're an idiot for believing that." Why the hell would I not believe that? Like, if someone was in my shoes, of course they would believe that Shohei Otani is going to be a Toronto Blue Jay if they say he's going to be a Toronto Blue Jay. Like, I had no reason to believe he's not. So, John Morosi tweeted it. So, listen, that was the happiest, like, what, two hours of my life? And then, yeah, then obviously the news came that he didn't. And then we ended up just getting Justin Turner. Yeah, uh, yeah it's it, it's one of the biggest, like, top of the world to, like, dead of all time. Like, it, it just I, – I, I was miserable, to be honest with you. I was just absolutely miserable. It sucked. It sucked so hard. Oh, well, dude, we, we were – we knew we were – so we just took over the podcast in January – um and at that time we sent in a demo to get it or whatever uh and so pretty much we were getting ready to take over and that's when this all started to drop and uh we had like a big friends um like christmas thing going on at the time or something like that and uh i just remember waking up that day of shohei otani going into carter's room and i'm like dude we're got shohei otani we popped champagne too early we popped it too early I called for John Morosi's head on a spike yeah. um, at the time. Just It was just heartbreaking. It was tough. Yeah, it's tough. But listen, I mean, he's probably so fucking happy he didn't sign here. So, I, it, it's – yeah, he, he made the right choice. It was either yeah. us who suck or the Cubs who suck or the Giants who are decent, I guess, and then the Dodgers. Like, who in their right mind would pick those three teams over the Dodgers? No one. So, I get it. I'm, I'm fine with him making that move. I really am. I, anyone with a brain does that. Yeah, and I don't think it was, like, again, nothing against Shohei Otani for not coming here. You can't be mad at a guy for not choosing to come here. Yeah. It, yeah, it was the John Morosi thing that just, yeah. I'm you know. I'm right there with you. Yeah, made me want to jump through a off a 30-story building. But Yeah, it was bad. It was really bad. Yeah. It, 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 it was, was always the Dodgers in the broad picture. Like, you got to look. You look at the Cali weather compared to the Toronto weather. It just it doesn't the, make sense. Why would anyone, why would, why, like, why would you want to li- willingly live in Toronto? Like, I, I mean, obviously, it's sick. I love Toronto. I go all, I'm there all the time. I'm just saying, like, who would ever in their right mind be like, you know what? I'm going to go to Toronto over L.A. No one. No yeah. one on the planet. It's, it doesn't make sense. Going through customs all the time. It, it, it just, it, it's just, it's a hassle. I, I get why he didn't come here. I mean, it's not, not, not like he has a brain. Believe it or not, yeah, Shohei Otani does have a brain, and he yeah. uses it to be very good at baseball. But speaking of not players not wanting to be in Toronto, obviously there's these articles coming out about Bo Bichette's friends, apparently, telling reporters that he does not want to be in Toronto. And some people, again, these fans on Twitter, whatever you want to call it, uh, Instagram, stuff like that, are saying Bo Bichette, and you can see it in his body language. You can see that he does not want to be in Toronto. He does not care. 
are you believing in that at all? Do you have any merit in Bo Bichette not wanting to be in Toronto? Or do you just think it's that the Toronto Blue Jays aren't a good baseball team? It's hard to have fun when your team is not being successful. I mean, I think the Bo Bichette friends knew. Like, that's shameless. That should not be considered a – like, that should not be considered a source. Like, it's just a stupid, stupid thing to tweet. But, uh, I mean – a baseball player wants to play for a good team. I think that's just what it is. I don't think Bobachet exclusively was like, get me the get me out of here. I just think he wants to win, obviously. Who doesn't want to win? And yeah. right now it's not with the Toronto Blue Jays, but they own all the controlling power. I think you can't trade him. It's like trading the guy at the lowest value in the planet. It's like, why would the Toronto Blue like Bobachet? If you wanted to get out of here, you would have been good this year. And you could have got at least a return for yourself. Now you have a way to run straight a plus below 60. It's like, are, who's going to want to pay that? Like, who's going to give you, if you're the Jays, who, who is going, like, who is going to, or is it worth trading him for the 30 rag prospect you're going to get for him? It's not it's stupid. So you, you're, you're staying here until you, until your value's up. And if not, I guess we'll just let you walk. Cause you're, you're not trading him for anything right now. It, it, you're going to get nothing. I am pro. I would probably kill myself if we let Bobuchet walk and not get anything. I, well, that, I that, you're not going to get anything for him right now. I like, don't. I don't know. I don't know because in my head, I'm thinking immediately that people know that Bobuchet is going to bounce back. I think even as Jays fans, we know that Bobuchet is going to bounce back. I don't think anybody's stupid. I think yeah, they could take advantage of the Blue Jays front office in making that decision for sure. But I think there's there's some merit there to understanding that this is not regular Bobuchet. Yeah, that's fair. I, I I don't know. I, I I'm just I just think like this is the lowest value you're gonna trade him for. If oh, you wanted to trade him, you would you yeah. would have traded him last year, after that playoff screw up. Like, I, I just I I don't think it makes sense right now. If you're the Toronto Blue Jays, it's not good asset management to trade a guy at his lowest value. I I, I just it doesn't make it would be like it would have been like trading Manoa last year. It's just it, yeah. it's dumb. Yeah, and, and we saw how that how that turned around right and then that's yeah. the exact same thing that could happen going into next year with Boba Shett and he comes back and he's leading the league in hits again it's very possible um I guess just going more into like the trade stuff is this it's right around the corner I mean do we all suspect or pretty much assume that you say Kikuchi is going to be gone like what, yeah, what's he's the gone. value there for that he's gone he's 100% gone I yeah. think that's clear uh it'd be stupid to let him walk He's kind of diminished his value the past couple starts, which is again the most Toronto Blue Jays thing ever. Um, but yeah, no, he he he's gone. He'll probably be a Baltimore Oriole, I'm assuming, uh, because they need starting pitching, and he's a they they stack the box with righties against them, and they have the longest left field wall in North America, so it makes a lot of sense. So I think he's gonna be a Baltimore Oriole. I really do. I think he's gonna be a Baltimore Oriole. Yeah, yeah that's good. Where we uh, Speaking of Yusei Kikuchi, you and Avery were in on Yusei Kikuchi, obviously, off after that horrific year in 2022. Yeah. When you guys started Kikuchi's corner as well. So that's, again, we're believing that he's going to be gone as well. So it that sucks. last start is going to be happening on Friday. Do you have a little bit of emotional ties to Yusei Kikuchi? Is that going to be maybe a yeah, tear shed met, after that start? Him, uh, we've met him. Uh, we, we were on the field with him last year after the game. He's a great dude. He's a great dude. Everyone... Uh, like everyone I talk to on the team talks about like how good of a guy you say is, how funny he is. So that's going to be a major blow uh, to to the team and to the, the clubhouse. So that's going to suck. But yeah, it's going to be a little emotional. I mean, we talk about a guy who was legitimately the worst pitcher I've ever seen. And then he bounces back and was like the best left-handed starter in baseball after the all-star break last year. A main reason why they made the playoffs. And then this year he's been okay, but it's just, it, it, it's, it sucks. It's like just a shitty, shitty scenario seeing a guy who has had such a roller coaster and be a fan favorite be gone. It's it's going to be really shitty. It's, it's, it's not a good look. And especially with how bad this team is, it makes it even worse. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. We, we talk about how good of a teammate he was, how funny he is. And, and we, we can, you can see that just on the diamond, but then uh, did that happened with Yariel Rodriguez, not knowing where to go. And you say Kikuchi sort of showing him around. I don't know. Just a really good guy to watch yeah. as a Toronto Blue Jay. That's, that's a brutal loss. And I mean, even uh, me and Carter, we were so high on Yusei Kikuchi. It started out as like a joke for us um, after that first year. And it came back and, you know, the guy just became electric. So that's, that was a ton of fun to watch. Um, do you have anybody else that you think is like 100% gone? See you later. Like we have Yimmy Garcia. Yeah, much. Yimmy, Yusei, probably Jano. Um, Richards, I mean, obviously. Justin Turner, obviously. Kevin Kiermaier, obviously. There's going to be like six or seven. By uh, next week, that will be gone for the Toronto Blue Jays. 
See, for me, that's that's what we want. That's what we want to see. We want to get as much assets back for these expiring contracts. Ross Atkins has been known to just not really make moves at the trade deadline. Is that kind of in the back of your head, just being a little bit nervous, especially with Ross Atkins' track record? Uh, is, is it something that you're confident in that he's actually going to make the right deals at the deadline? Yeah, I, it's it's what right like they're not going to fire a gm halfway through the season unfortunately so like we just have to trust that the people around them like the james clicks of the world and the scouts who go went to other like went to minor league games to watch some players uh had some good prospect evaluation and know what they want for these guys so yeah it's i'm not 100 percent confident that these trades are going to be even good ones but i guess we'll have to wait and see man that's just that's just what it is you can trade a guy for like a Teoscar Hernandez and be like Teoscar was like the ninth ranked prospect for the Astros. No one really cared about him. And he was like a legend here. So yeah, I'm really not sure with where we're going to go. And I'm, I don't know enough about prospects or care about them enough to like, just be like, all right, this guy's good or this guy's bad. I don't care. I just don't know. Oh yeah. People, people were giving us grief that the drafts came around and we're talking about the draft picks. And the guys are like, do you guys know what you're talking about? And we're like, we're reading the same articles you guys are reading. Yeah. I'm not looking into high school players for you. Yeah, exactly. Like, who cares? Like, the, <laughs> these guys are going to be, like, working at Zellers in, like, four years majority of the time. Like, who cares? It's, like, pretty much like buying a lottery ticket. Some of them are going to work out. Some of them aren't. Majority of them probably aren't. And that's yeah. why, again, that's I think that's all why we're in unison, that we want to keep Bobachette and Vladimir Grow Jr. So you have proven talent on your major league team. And you want to put assets in seats. If you trade yeah. both these players, not everyone's going to want to watch a AAA Buffalo team starting for the Toronto Blue Jays. It's just not how it's going to be. So... Today's episode is sponsored by Supply House. Get supplies from the site that's made for skilled trades, supplyhouse.com. Supplyhouse.com is the most reliable way to order plumbing, HVAC, and electrical products online. Their easy-to-use website is packed with helpful resources and the latest product info to help you get the job done right. Shop a complete inventory of over 200,000 parts from over 400 top brands and get your order delivered right to your door with fast shipping from coast to coast. Need help with an order? Get expert support and industry-leading service from the friendliest folks in the business and talk to a real person every time. Pros in the skilled trades can get you a competitive edge by joining SupplyHouse.com's free Trade Master program. Every Trade Master gets access to a dedicated phone line, free shipping, and discounts on every order. Join the thousands of trade pros already benefiting from their free membership at SupplyHouse.com TM and order plumbing, HVAC, and electrical supplies from anywhere with just a few clicks at SupplyHouse.com. Braden, I don't know about you, but I got one more question. This one's just kind of out there. So yeah, this I, one I, is, if you could harness one Blue, Blue Jays player attribute, whether it's Boba Shett's hair, maybe Ernie Clement's good looks, Dalton Marshall's speed, what are you going with? I'm going to go with my Earn Dog looks, man. I mean, I we hang out with Ernie. We talk to Ernie a pretty decent amount. He's, I consider him a really good friend of mine. I'd probably go with Ernie's looks. Man Rocket, yeah. uh, really good at golf. Um, but, yeah, obviously I can't pick the golf stuff. But, yeah, it's, it's Ernie's looks. I mean, that guy, everywhere he goes, just the eyes in the room are – pointed to him so yeah i'm gonna have to go with ernie clement that's just the clear cut one one looks for ernie yeah that's that's the right pick for sure uh you you wouldn't be able to walk around toronto looking like that guy yeah um anyway uh yeah uh you, you talked about golfing i'm not sure if you're a big golfer but not right sometimes not really i'm so yeah. i'm so busy in gate 14 i have like no time to like golf really that's yeah that's exactly yeah. what happened to us we were we were out like three times a week last year yeah uh then this year it was just you just no shot whatsoever you get home from work you do the pod it's just crazy um but you golfed with the boys uh who uh who's got the best skills there ernie it's not even close i mean he like uh i think uh avery and him tied on the front like they both shot one under i think it was and then on the back, Ernie just kind of ran away with it. So or it's it's Ernie Clement. He he's he, he's just a dog. He's so good at golf. He really is. He's a man. Well, he's a hockey guy too. Screw it. The, I, I didn't I didn't play in that group. I did. Oh, okay. I, I I I told Avery like you can play with Alto. Like I'm just gonna not contribute at all to this match play. Uh, I don't play enough. So it was Avery and Alto versus Davis and Ernie, and I think they lost three and two or something like that. But yeah, it was. Uh, I was in the group behind with just um, it was supposed to be me, Bassett, and uh, Curtis, but Bassett had like an autograph signing, so uh, it was just me and Curtis just chilling in the back, just uh, watching them. So it was it was fun. Well, and Ernie is a hockey guy as well, so this guy's just kind of an all time athlete and uh, pretty many much sport you put him in. Huh? Yeah, no, he's nasty at hockey too. He's really good at hockey. He's uh, yeah, he always after all of his beer league games, he texts us his uh, beer league stats. It's so funny. He, he's the man. 
Oh, yeah. You know what? It's, it's, uh, they're such a fun team. Like they got such good characters. I mean, we went yeah. there and you got, uh, you got the stroke playing in there when David Schneider goes up and the place just becomes an absolutely electric factor. So sick. I think that was the song of the trip when we went out there. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was, it was amazing. It was such a good time. The boys are fun to watch. Even, I mean, like we always talk about is this team is tough to watch, but also in four months, we're going to be hating our lives because there's no baseball on. Yeah, so. exactly. So just enjoy it, man. Like, don't let it affect you. Just like, I mean, enjoy that baseball's on the TV. Maybe watch it for the guys in the other team. And uh, yeah, just go from there. That that that's where I'm at with this, at least. Well, uh, we appreciate you coming on, Johnny. It was unbelievable. We uh, sort of want to do this little bit of a crossover here for a while. So uh, yeah, we got it done. Uh, yeah, it was it was good. Good to talk to you. I mean, we we've listened to your podcast, uh, you know, sort of coming up and before we got this a little bit too. So. Um, yeah, what you guys do is awesome. We uh, we like how it's sort of, you know, not the specific Blue Jays media BS all the time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, reading so, off the teleprompter. You, you put yeah. a little bit of your personality to it. You get uh, different perspectives, different viewpoints than uh, the Blair and Barkers of the world. So uh, yeah. I think a lot of fans can appreciate that. And you guys are, yeah, having a hell of a time. Just uh, a bunch of guys just kind of snapping around like we're doing on this podcast as well. So uh, props to you guys for uh, kind of going through this horror show of a Toronto Blue Jays season. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, fellas. Yeah, keep doing the thing. And like I said, like, do not let the Toronto Blue Jays affect you. And uh, yeah, just keep 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 uh, moving forward and enjoy your summer. That's the best advice I have for you. Do not let this team affect you. You know. Perfect, my guy. Uh, yeah, we'll let you go. We uh, Carter's got a slow pitch game tonight, so he's got to get out there. And uh, they call me Bradley you. Zimmer out there. I just cover the entire outfield. There we go. Crazy out there. There we go. All right, fellas. Enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, yeah, let's go. Let's. Let, let, we're on to twenty twenty five. We're on to twenty twenty five where we're at easy fellas